So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this still image into this animation. It is subtle and if this is something that you want, then go ahead and watch this video. In this video, we're going to be using Adobe After Effects and you are not going to need any prior knowledge to After Effects to go through with this video as I will be explaining um, everything step by step. So yeah, hopefully it's easy to understand and let's get straight into it. So once you have opened After Effects, you're going to be greeted with this page. Now just uh, press the new project button. And then you'll be greeted with this page where you can make any composition. So just go ahead and click that. Once you have clicked that, we can see all the settings here. Uh, change all the width, the height, uh, frame rate, and whatever you want. Normally, I just keep this on like this, like 1920 by 1080 with a 60 frame per second. And the background, I make it green so that because it's going to be exported as a video. So with the green background, I will be able to overlay it on top of anything. And next, we have the duration. Now, normally, my animation is only around 4 seconds long. But because uh, you're, you're going to be able to change the duration of the export the video in the export menu, I'm just not going to change it until I export the video, which is going to be the last step. Now, at this point, I do hope that you already have the PNG image of the character you're going to want the animation to be in. Now, simply just drag and drop your character into the composition. Now, once this is done, just make the image smaller so that it is actually visible in the composition and not going outside of it. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to duplicate the layer that this image is on because we are going to be animating this um, layer by layer. Normally what I do is the hair layer, the eye layer, and the rest of the body as one layer. Now obviously you can create more layer if you want it to look better, but just for this tutorial, I am going to only be showing the hair layer, the eye layer, and the body layer. So let's start with the first layer, just Control c Control v copy-paste the layer, and then we're going to be using this pen tool up here while selecting this layer to um, go ahead and outline her hair. Now this part is going to take some time so I'm going to be speeding up most of the parts but the for, but for the parts that I will be talking it will be normal. So for starters, um, with outlining the outside of the hair, since I am using a PNG image with a transparent background, you don't have to be so accurate for the outside. However, for the inside, like the ones where it overlaps with the face or the shirt, that one you're going to have to be accurate on. So for next one, it's going to be for the hair that is on the face. Now normally, there is going to be some shadows that is caused because of the hair. Now you would want to select that with this masking layer as well because uh, it's going to make it so that when you are moving the hair, the shadow of the hair will also move with the animation rather than having the shadow not move while the hair is moving because that will actually just look weird. So now that you're done with the masking, so now what will happen is that if you remove the visibility on the second layer, which is the background layer, it's just actually going to show you the hair only. Now what you can do is if you double click the layer that your masking is on, it will only show you the hair layer. So now once you're on the hair layer only, you can actually just start animating it by using the pin tool on the top. By pressing that, you can put down pins on the hair. So just put down pins on places where you don't want the hair to move like the top of the hair and where you want the hair to move like the strands of hair near the face or outside this part is not very easy for me to explain so just look at the video and roughly decide on where you want to put your pins on your character just by uh, how i put mine Now once you have placed down all your pins, what you want to do then is press the letter U on your keyboard. What that will do is that will open um, this part, which is going to be uh, all of your pins. It's all shown there. So now once you have this, go ahead and use the selection tool and select all of those pins. And what you can do now is you can copy and paste um, all of your pins into how long your uh, you want the animation to be. So as I said, mine is going to be 4 seconds long, so I am going to copy paste them into the 4th uh, second. 
because what that's gonna do is that's gonna any animation I make will be between 0 and 4 seconds once the 4th second is done it's going to loop back to 0 second so it's just gonna be a very smooth loop so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, copy paste the pins on the second second so basically uh, the pins on the second second is the one I am going to be uh, moving so uh, that's going to make what you can see on the video right now so basically original image goes to modified image goes back to original image basically and the modified one is the two second one which is why we are making another pin in the two seconds because that we are going to modify in this video so hopefully you understand my bad explanation because now we're going to start with the animation so make sure that you are selecting the pins that are in the middle which is the two second one and once you have done that we are ready to move the pins use your selection tool and just uh, move however you like it to go so you can move it a little bit I recommend not moving it too far and as you can see because of uh, some pins act as an anchor that's why I told you to put pins on places where you don't want movement uh, it will just not move that certain place where you pin even though you move the other one very far away so now you can just try to move them I recommend moving them all in one uh, direction that way it will be easier for you to fix the layers underneath to fit the animation you'll see what i'm talking about later so i recommend you watch the entire video uh, to understand everything first and then you could try to do it and if you can't then you can revise the video so now once you're done moving the pins go ahead and select all of your pins using the selection tool and press f9 on your keyboard what this will do is this will make your animation seem smoother and how you know that you have done this is that once you have done it the pins will change into a different shape and now to go back and see every single one of your layers you can just double click comp1 over here and you'll be sent back into your main composition where you can see every single layers and you can go ahead and preview your playback So because the background still do have that hair, um, when your hair animation moves, it will actually show the hair that is in the background layer. So it just kind of like doubles as you can see right now. So we're going to have to fix that. And this is why I told you to try your best to make it move in one direction because it will make it easier to fix. So how to fix it is just simply memorize where uh, you have to fix things. Like this, like this part of the hair, it, you have to fix it because it doubles. So now just simply uh, double click your background layer and go ahead and take the eraser tool and just try to erase uh, parts of the hair that doubles. So my left side is doubled, so I am going to uh, go ahead and er erase this part. And because I did make my way uh, move to only one direction, I can just simply erase the left side of the hair and not the right side but if you make it move in two directions you're gonna have to um, fix the right side of it as well and fixing parts where the hair actually like overlaps like this one with the shirt or with the face it's actually a bit harder because what I normally do is I just paint over them now you could do this some other way but it's probably just easier to paint over them now you don't have to be extremely precise because I bet anybody's gonna notice a very little detail especially when they would normally focus on the parts that are moving which is the part that you make uh, move like the hair so now that you're done with that now I'm just going to repeat what I just did with the hair but for the eye so uh, yeah copy paste the background layer and since I already did some fixing uh, to match with the hair on this one, background layer, I am just going to remove um, all of the paint and erases I did on the eye layer. And I'm just going to use the pen tool to outline the eye and mask that out so, you know, I'm not going to interfere with anything else but the eye.
So next we're gonna be doing the body. So for the body, because we want everything to move, including the hair and the eye. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and select all of the layers. And once you have done that, go ahead and right click them and press pre-compose. And now we have just one layer with every other layer inside of it. So yeah, go back to the comp. And over here, we are going to be able to animate everything, including the hair and the eye. So, you know, just do the same thing with the... Except this time, you don't have to do the pen for other thing because we're gonna be animating the entire thing, basically. So use your puppet pin and just do the exact same thing. So this is my result and um, once you're done with that, just go ahead and file, go to export and then we can go to add to render queue. Now this will open up and you're going to be able to see your settings. So just go ahead and go to the best setting one. And normally I don't change anything here except for the duration as I said before, my animation is only 4 seconds long. So just change that and press OK. And now press the lossless one which is underneath the best setting one. And this is where you can change your output. So basically what format you're gonna use and all that stuff. Normally I just leave this at lossless, but one thing that uh, you should note is that even though my animation is only 4 seconds long, uh, using the normal lossless one will uh, use up 1.3 gigabytes of storage. So if you value your storage, you should just use QuickTime, which is going to render it as .mov. So now I am going to be opening my OBS and I'm going to change the RAM above me into what I just made in uh, After Effects. So there you go. And because this uh, layer in OBS already has the chroma key set up, I don't have to set up another chroma key to show you this one because it, you know, it, it is going to have a green screen behind it. So I really do hope you guys enjoy this video. The raw clip of this entire video is one and a half hour long and I cut it down to around only 15 minutes long for you guys so I hope that you really enjoyed it. Leave a like, it will be really appreciated and maybe subscribe if you want to see maybe some dumb tutorials like this. And uh, leave a comment on what I can improve and I guess I'll see you all next time. Bye!